This is the new Huawei MateBook X Pro Premium Edition. It is an extremely small and lightweight laptop that packs a surprisingly powerful punch regardless of the tasks that you throw at it. Now from playing around with it for the last week or so, I am really impressed. So let's take a look at it. So you do get this really nice premium package and unboxing experience, which for me was a great touch with the red sleeve. But then once you open it up, you are greeted with the laptop. And below that you have your charging brick, which is also really small, which is great. Your USB-C cable for charging and included USB-C to USB-A adapter, which is a nice touch as well as some headphones. Now, when it comes to the design, it really is a great and sleek looking laptop, which weighs just under one kilogram, which is insanely light. It is only 13.5 millimeters thick at the thickest point. So carrying around this laptop is extremely easy and it can fit into almost any backpack that you might have. You also have this really nice soft touch coating on the magnesium alloy frame, which makes it feel really premium. And it has this sort of luxurious feel when you're using it, which I really like. And even though this one isn't blue, they do come in different colors, namely black and white as well. But I actually really like the sort of light blue color of this one. On the left side, you will be greeted with two Thunderbolt ports as well as an air vent. And on the right, you will have your standard USB-C port as well as a privacy switch for your webcam, which is always a nice touch to have. Now, I do wish that this had a memory card reader as I use it daily, but luckily it does have the Thunderbolt ports, which will allow you to connect to external displays without needing an HDMI port, which would have probably made this laptop slightly beefier. So I do like the trade of having a slimmer size and not having that HDMI port. Now, even though this laptop is tiny and almost weighs nothing, you don't have any sort of trade-offs. And the first area where you still get premium features are on the display. So this is a 14.2 inch, 120 hertz, 3.1 K flexible OLED touch display with a massive 93% screen to body ratio, which I absolutely love because it not only gives you a larger display with a smaller body, but it also looks cleaner compared to having those thick bezels on the side of the screen, which I am not a fan of. It also has a three by two aspect ratio with 3120 by 2080 resolution, which for some people are great as it gives you a little bit more real estate for browsing the web and doing creative tasks, but then it isn't as great for gaming and viewing content as you do get larger black bars on the top and the bottom, which is not ideal. The display is also flexible and scratch resistant, which is just a good feature to have, especially on a touch screen. Now with the display being OLED, it does mean you get an amazing contrast ratio of 1 million to 1 with blacks looking inky black, but then you also have true 10 bit color with Adobe RGB, P3 and sRGB color space with a Delta E of less than one, meaning if you're a filmmaker or videographer or even photographer, this display will be amazing because the color accuracy is insane. The display is also fairly bright and can reach a maximum brightness of 1000 nits, which should be bright enough for most situations. But then you also have that anti-reflective coating on the display that just helps cut those reflections from windows and light sources when you are working outside, for example, which really helps a lot with that screen visibility as well. Moving down to the bottom, you will find your fingerprint scanner at the top right, which is a great feature for logging into your laptop, which can also, of course, use facial recognition as well. Then you have your keyboard, which feels really good to type on. It isn't anything amazing, but I also don't really have a lot of complaints about it either. But I found that keyboards can sometimes be sort of a personal preference. So it might be something that you like a lot or that someone else might not like at all. And then below that, you have this massive touchpad that even extends to the edge of the laptop, which is both good and bad, as sometimes when typing, you accidentally do touch the keypad, which isn't always the best thing to happen because while typing, you sometimes click and it just switches to a different row. And then lastly, you also have a 1080p webcam, which actually looks really good compared to a lot of other laptops on the market. Plus you do have some AI features like auto reframe, which will help keep you more centered in the frame eye contact mode, which will help it look like you're actually making eye contact with the camera instead of looking at the screen and even background blur to really just have all of it run internally and not on teams, for example. But then you also have a quad mic system. So even if you are sat further away from the laptop, you do still get good quality audio from the mic and even some slight noise reduction. Now, as mentioned before, don't let the size of the laptop fool you. Even though this is only a 14 inch laptop that weighs under one kilogram, it does have a fair bit of power under the hood. So powering the MateBook X Pro is the new Intel Ultra 9 chip with 40 watt TDP and Intel Arc graphics and 32 gigabytes of RAM, which makes it possible to edit photos and even 4K videos, multitask and even game 
even though I wouldn't necessarily say that this laptop is made for gaming. When you plug the laptop in though and switch it over to performance mode, you do get a decent amount of power that is able to run games like Forza Horizon and even some newer titles, but I did however run into some problems with some other games like Guardians of the Galaxy that just doesn't want to load at all because it doesn't have the correct drivers. But for me, the best part of course is the editing and the size to performance ratio, which definitely makes this a great device to travel with. So while it is not ideal for gaming, it is really good for traveling, creating content, and then of course doing some gaming on the side as well. Now this also of course leans into the next section, which is battery life and cooling. And for me, from testing this device for a little over a week now, the cooling on it is actually really good, especially for the size and even under heavier loads, it performs surprisingly well. And it is actually really quiet, especially if you compare it to gaming laptops. And then in terms of battery life, it does come back with a 70 watt hour battery, which should last around four to five hours in performance mode, which is fairly decent, especially for a high powered Windows laptop. But if you use it in balance mode with more general day-to-day -day tasks, you can squeeze a little bit more out of the battery and you should get around seven to eight hours which should get you close to that full day of battery life. Now what's great is the charger does come packed with a 90 watt supercharged turbo mode, meaning that you can charge this battery from zero to 100% in less than an hour. But that also means that around 10 minutes of charging can get you around two hours of battery life, which is absolutely amazing because sometimes you only have those few minutes to charge, but at least with this one, it does translate into actual nice usage. And that is it for the Huawei MateBook X Pro. And this for me honestly is one of the best laptops for people on the go as well as creatives as you do get that amazing display which is extremely color accurate but you can still edit up to 4k video so if you need to edit high quality content that looks good then this is going to be a great option for you overall this device performs really well and everything from the look and the feel to the display and even the speakers are great so if you're looking for a device that is easy to commute with is small and light enough to take with you anywhere but then still has enough power to do almost anything that you need, then the Huawei MateBook X Pro is definitely one to consider. And then, as always, until next time, cheers.